What's going on guys? So we are in the F450. It's been a while actually. Uh, you know, since we got the Denali, we've been putting the majority of the miles on that or even my wife's Expedition and not really driving the F450 too much. Um, and consequently, that means we haven't really been towing the RV around very much. So the RV has pretty much been living at the uh, the property for a while and and not really getting a heck of a lot of use except when we have guests over who need a place to sleep while they're there. Um, that said though, you know, I want to talk to you about some of the the differences in terms of driving impressions of the F450 and, and this size of truck versus the half-ton GMC that I've been driving around. Because I know there's a lot of folks out there who wonder, should they get a single rear wheel? Should they get a half-ton? Should they get a smaller truck versus a larger pickup truck? And uh, let's talk about that. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I've probably put about 4,000, maybe 3,000 miles on the Denali um, in the period of time that I haven't been driving the F450. So a lot of miles going on the GMC truck and not so many miles going on this truck. Uh, thankfully, nothing going on with this truck from a negative perspective just sitting there. I try to start the truck every few days or so just to get it going and Maybe I'll drive it around the yard just for a minute or so, just to you know keep it all fluid and moving. But for the most part, again, we've been driving the GMC around and, and it's been a pretty dang phenomenal truck. Um, all that said, there's a lot of differences in terms of how a truck this size feels when you hop into it after you haven't been driving it for a while. So, like I said, we've driven my wife's Expedition a good amount. We've driven the GMC. The GMC has uh, well over 5,000 miles on it now. And, you know, it's been a really great truck to drive around as an everyday kind of run around vehicle. This truck, on the other hand, has kind of been sitting there and, and just getting dusty. And actually, I took it for a car wash just now because I wanted to at least make it look a little nicer. And, you know, it was interesting hopping into this truck after driving that GMC for such a long period of time in the sense that the GMC certainly feels a lot lighter it feels a lot more nimble. And the small, that three liter LZO diesel engine, uh, that Duramax is actually really powerful considering the size of the truck. I always felt these newer generation diesel pickup trucks uh, were very, very powerful. They accelerated very well for the size of the truck and the size of the engine. Um, and the horsepower and torque numbers that, that you see nowadays where most of them are at or above 400 horsepower or at or above 800 pound-feet of torque, which is more than enough to move a truck this size, especially considering that's roughly twice the number in terms of horsepower and torque as a lot of these smaller displacement diesel engines. So I ask myself at the end of the day, um, is there a big difference in terms of how it feels to drive both of these trucks around? So you probably saw the video that I did where I talked about how tall the hood is on the GMC. And uh, when I compared it to my wife's Expedition or even the F450, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of folks who said, "Well, it doesn't look that much different than the F450, even though you can definitely tell the hood's a lot taller than than my wife's Expedition." But when you're driving the F450, the hood definitely seems as if there's more of a slope to it. Um, you really, really can see more over and in front of the vehicle than the GMC. The GMC, uh, even though I've had it for a while now and I've gotten used to understanding how far I am away from objects whenever I pull up, it still has a really weird kind of optical illusion to it whenever you are pulling up to things. Whereas on my F450, I really can get right up in front of things and still know, you know, that I'm not going to hit something. And I can almost pull up to about a half a foot away from something before, you know, I need to absolutely stop. Whereas on the GMC, there's still times where if I'm not using my parking sensors, whenever I pull up to something, I think I'm about to hit it. Then I get out and there's like three and a half, four feet of space between the front of the truck and whatever that object is, which I guess, you know, may help some folks and prevent them from hitting things, but it is just something to note. Um, so the size of the truck is interesting because this truck feels significantly larger. Now, the interior, maybe not so much because the interior kind of has this older feel and appeal to it versus these newer interiors that you're seeing on, on GM vehicles. But from an exterior, from an overall size perspective, probably because of the size of the towing mirrors and just the overall size of the truck in general, 
when you drive the F450, it feels like a heavier truck, it feels like a larger truck, and it feels like a more powerful truck. Um, and mainly it's because you feel the power, you feel the torque whenever you're accelerating and you realize how much mass that it's moving. Now I'm not speaking negatively against the GMC when it comes to that because that three liter diesel does an exemplary job of moving that truck and it actually feels faster, it feels more nimble, but it still gives you that really classic diesel engine sound if that's what you're looking for. It shifts buttery smooth the 10-speed transmission that they have in that truck is absolutely flawless, at least the one we have. It is not given us a single hiccup, a single misshift. Everything has been phenomenal about how that transmission has been working and operating for us. Uh, the diesel engine has been absolutely great. You know, part of me wishes that it didn't have the auto start stop feature with the engine whenever you get up to a red light or you get up to stops. Um, but then the other part of me realizes that it actually is improving fuel economy. And so long as they can maintain reliability of that platform with that feature, and we find ourselves kind of leaving it on sometimes, especially when I'm trying to maximize fuel economy. There's a lot of times where I'll turn it off just because uh, I'm in stop and go traffic and I don't want the thing constantly shutting off. And sometimes it doesn't shut off because it's it's designed with some logic to it and, and understanding when it needs to. Um, but you know, it's, it's actually been a function that I've learned to appreciate at times, even though it's still kind of annoying and bugs me at other times. Now, from a usage perspective in the truck, do I feel as if it's as practical as the F450? I'm going to say it's probably more practical in many ways because it gets better fuel economy, significantly better fuel economy, like 12 miles to a gallon better than what I get with this truck. I'm not even kidding you. This truck averages about 12 to 13 miles per gallon. Uh, that truck averages like 22 to 24 miles per gallon, uh, maybe even higher than that if I'm on a city road or if I'm on a, on a highway, I mean. Um, but that's just not the only area that it excels. Um, whenever you're loading things in the back, the truck also sits significantly lower. The bed height is lower, and because it's lower, it's easier to load and unload things into that truck. Uh, the multi-pro tailgate has actually come in kind of handy because I've loaded some things up. I moved a drum set around, I moved some equipment around, and anything that slid kind of further back in the bed, I was able to drop that middle tailgate, walk much closer to that item and pull it out versus having to deploy a step or climb onto the tailgate to get things out. So yeah, that, that's kind of a cool feature and it's, it's one that's definitely been probably the most enjoyable feature of the multi-pro tailgate is being able to use it um, in that way, getting closer to the bed to be able to load and unload things. Um, I've used the step several times to get into the bed and out of the bed. Uh, we had to go pick up some feed. We threw like eight or 10 bags in the back and some of them were towards the back of the truck and using the step to get in and out. It's definitely um, a different feeling step than the Ford. The Ford step is, is interesting because it extends further back off of the tailgate. So basically from the, the tailgate to the step is a little further back. So if you're, if you're getting in and out of the bed quickly, it's actually at a better angle for you to hop down with. Whereas the GMC, because the step folds right off the back of the tailgate when the tailgate's down, it's much closer to where you need to step down to. So you have to be a little bit more careful if you're moving in and out of your bed quickly. Um, you know, that said, you also just need to be careful in general when you're using these steps because it's really easy to lose your balance on one, to get your, your heel of your boot caught on it as you're coming down, and uh, it can be pretty catastrophic if you're not careful. Um, aside from that though, both of them are highly functional. They, they both accomplish what the manufacturer wants them to do for you, and that's to give you assistance whenever getting into the bed of your truck or getting out of your bed. Um, it, they do help because climbing into the bed of these modern day trucks can actually be a bit of a chore, especially jumping down. If you got bad knees, if you got a bad back, um, or if you, even if you're just getting older and you don't want to put wear and tear on your joints and bones, yeah, sure, the, the 18 and 21 and 22 year olds that watch these videos can hop in and out of a truck bed like it's nothing. But when you start getting into your later years, it sure is nice having any amount of assistance possible to get you in and out of your bed. Um, and it's nice that these trucks all offer some means of providing you that. Now, from a towing perspective, from a payload cargo management perspective, there's really no question in terms of which truck handles that better. 
Uh, the F450 is just a significantly beefier truck in terms of suspension, in terms of capabilities, both in towing and payload. And you can tell right off the bat, whenever you load something up, this truck doesn't bottom the suspension out. This truck doesn't feel as if it struggles to handle weight or to tow anything. Uh, it just, it handles those situations better. So this isn't just about an F450. This is really any three quarter ton up truck that's designed specifically for towing and hauling. When you talk about half ton trucks, they can do that and they do that exceptionally well as long as you don't exceed what they're designed to do. And that's kind of the key here is that, you know, if you want to compare this truck to a half ton truck, the half ton truck's going to win in about 50% of the categories and then this truck is going to win in about 50% of the categories. Half ton truck's going to be far more comfortable. A half ton truck's going to be far more manageable in terms of overall length and size. A half ton truck is probably going to keep your passengers from complaining about back aches and, and joint problems whenever they get out of it. And a half ton truck's going to cost less, it's going to get better fuel economy, um, and it's probably going to be able to handle most towing and hauling applications that the average person would ever need it for. Or even, you know, a, the professional contractor or whoever. As long as you're not hauling around really heavy trailers or you're not lifting, you know, bags and bags and bags of concrete and things in the back that, that you know, you need 3,000 plus pounds of cargo capacity for, a half ton truck's probably going to be perfectly fine for 99% of the applications most people have. Where a truck like this or even a three quarter ton, a one ton, single rear wheel or dually truck really, really shine is when you're looking for a vehicle that will provide you capability beyond what typical homeowners, typical car buyers need. And that's hauling a heavy fifth wheel, hauling a really heavy trailer, going to a hardware store frequently to pick up a lot of really, really heavy stuff. Um, or, you know, if you need to use it for heavy construction work or you're going to be tossing a lot of stuff in the bed of your truck that, that typically would tax the suspension on other vehicles. That's really where you see these heavier duty trucks shine. Um, but if you're looking for ride comfort, fuel economy, uh, and the Swiss Army knife capability of carrying a bunch of stuff, towing a bunch of stuff, and having room to do it in extreme comfort, modern half-ton trucks are going to be the right truck for you. It's just really when you get into that heavier duty application where you're going to be needing those heavier brakes and those, those higher rated numbers. That's where these trucks really shine. Anyways, guys, just wanted to make that quick comparative analysis. Uh, yeah, hopping into the Denali definitely gives you a, a more comfortable, more universal capability versus getting in this truck. And this road is one I wanted to drive down to specifically kind of talk about the differences between how one rides versus the other because this road is beating me up right now and it's it's a paved road it's just a very poorly paved road but you can probably hear in my voice and the microphone and how things are moving around that until you transition to a road like this any kind of rough road is going to beat you up in a heavy duty truck and a half ton truck if it can accomplish everything you're trying to use it for from a work perspective or from a payload and towing perspective it's honestly gonna be the better fit for you because you're gonna be able to really live with that truck on various types of road conditions in a much better way. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we will talk to you again very, very soon.